So today I wanted to speak a bit about future and transhumanism. Uh, that is how we will become cyborgs in the not so far future. I assume that many of you know who Ray Kurzweil is or have at least heard about the guy, but if you don't, uh, Ray is a director of engineering at Google, but more importantly for this topic he is a computer scientist and inventor, successful businessman, author of several books and uh, a well-known futurist. He's done a lot of job in bringing the technologies we now take for granted to the market, but he's mostly well known due to his law, accelerated deterrence, and future predictions that he has listed in his several published books with titles like The Age of Intelligent Machines, it was his first published book in 1990, then followed by The Age of Spiritual Machines in 1999, and also The Singularity is Near in 2005 where he famously predicted that we will experience singularity by 2045. There's another book by him, How to Create a Mind, and it came out more recently, but that deals more with the practical problems of replicating human mind by means of technology, that is computers, so it's not that essential the topic I wanted to touch upon here. So what are these books about? What's the law of accelerating returns and what the hell is singularity? And how is it all connected with us becoming machines? Not to complicate matters, it's basically about the fact that our IT technology growth is exponential rather than linear. And that means the more advanced our tech gets, the more advanced our improvements on that tech and the faster we adopt these changes. While it took several decades to significantly improve an information technology in the past and for people to adopt its, say, early computers in the 50s, now we see vast improvements in IT every day and we adapt to them much more easily. To illustrate, no one was really talking about and taking technologies as self-driving cars or 3D printers seriously in, say, 2010 that was not so far back, but now they are all the rage just as IBM's Jeopardy winner, the smart computer program Watson that understands written text and can answer questions based on that text. Kurzweil believes and can prove with a lot of various charts that technology will continue to rapidly evolve exponentially until in 2045 we reach singularity and event when humans cannot be distinguished from computers and basically merge with them, creating a sort of a human machine race. As technologies are so advanced at that stage, no meaningful evaluation of what happens next and how it impact, will impact us humans can really be made. If you'd like to know more about this stuff, you can just look up any of Kurzweil's long conference speeches here on YouTube. But what I really wanted to talk about was our reactions to these news. How do we deal with the idea of sentient robots or as being these sentient robots? How are our humanity, the stuff that makes us humans, impacted? To be honest, there are a lot of crazies out there, both from the transhumanist camp that I probably belong to and the traditionalist camp, so to say. Some people see computer chips implanted in humans as a same sign of Antichrist coming, the end of the world or whatever. For others, singularity is probably just another form of religion, a belief which is to be held religiously and probably accords with some sort of a messiah to them offering the cure to all diseases, old age, global warming, dogs fighting cats and whatever. These are just extremes and of course the world or anything that happens in the world is not black and white. There are also some balanced views on singularity and its impact on us and I wanted to touch upon these more. Paul Joseph Batson in The Dark Side of Ray Kurzweil's Transhumanist Utopia, for example, believes that, and I'm quoting here, Futurist Ray Kurzweil's prediction that humans will be uploading their minds to computers by 2045 and that bodies will be replaced by machines before the end of the century, currently receiving a new wave of media attention, overlooks the fact that such technology will likely be monopolized by the elite as a way of enslaving the rest of humanity on an industrial scale. Well, this could happen, perhaps, and it's a valid point. However, Chinese cell phone company Huawei now sells 18 USD under its smartphones in Africa. Granted, 80 USD won't buy you the best cell phone there is, and this is still huge money in Africa. But it's also astonishing that you can actually make a touchscreen smartphone in that price range now, 
And that illustrates the fact why the elite won't mon monopolize anything. Because the elite really hasn't monopolized computers like people thought it will in the 1970s. Michael Douglas also hasn't mon monopolized his Wall Street cell phone, for example, and etc. Technologies are in the hands of the elite first because they cost a lot of money and are exclusive. Well, uh, they also don't work that well at the beginning. After some price, their some time their price drops, perform performance increases, and a kid in Africa can afford one. Maybe not at the same time as kids in America on, or Europe receive them, but still life hasn't been fair to everyone up to this point in history and new technologies won't make us all equal. Well, it might be argued that the gap between developed and less developed economies will increase due to technology increases. It's clearly not the case now. As Ray Kurzweil has said himself, there are some societies that have stepped into information age right from the agricultural age, places where industrial revolution never really happened. Well, parts of the world will lag behind, it shouldn't be like what we see in Elysium movie trailers, where the rich elites have everything and uh, the poor people don't have a thing. One other point that can be argued concerns how we'll live in late 2020s already, when as per Kurzweil a lot of jobs will just disappear. By that time, self-driving car and similar flight systems could destroy all the developed worlds and transportation jobs. IBM's Watson has already been dispatched to help call center employees and clients. And by late 2020s, these jobs will probably be gone too. There will be less medical workers, police officers, manufacturing will be completely taken over by robots, etc. So what to do with all the unemployed people? It's a concern that we see everywhere even now. Some people say that so many unemployed could even halt the technological progress because, well, who'll buy all the new shiny products that robots manufacture? There are people who believe that the government should just uh, tax companies that use robots more and hand the money out to the people in need so that they could all follow their dreams and would not need to slave away countless hours at the workplace. I, though, believe that a human being is inherently lazy, and if this would be the case, we just spend our days in virtual reality that we'll have by then, and we'll be just engaging in virtual sex with strangers or, or other pleasurable things. There would be few people that would want to follow their dreams or do something pro productive. Instead, I would suggest that basic human rights need to be upgraded to provide people with good shelter, food, clothing and for example internet connection just to make these things uh, basic human rights. Not to make corporations pay more tax, uh, perhaps they would be asked to provide these rights to the communities and people and they do it more effect effectively and cheaper than any government initiative. Of course, this should be overseen by the government. In that case, the unemployed would not have to worry about sustenance anymore, but it wouldn't also be so that they have a good level of income not to worry about anything. In that case, I believe more people would actually want to follow their dreams uh, to make some stuff at home, design some stuff, and print it out with 3D printers and share with others or sell these items to others. As we all are one part inherently lazy, but also want to live better than others, we want to be this like Lil Wayne's and say, you know, look at you and look at us and how we are better than you are. But if the government just gives out money left and right to people who do nothing, it's not a good incentive for these people to start working. In the conclusion, I'd really like to touch upon the essence of being human and what changes of Kurzweil's singularity does take place. Now, some people argue that at the core of Kurzweil's writings and predictions is just a sad man who is afraid to die and wants to live forever, to become a sort of a god merging with a machine. And this idea was expressed by one Christian guy on the internet. Well, that might be true, but, but what changes? There are a lot of people who don't want to die. Christianity, for example, promises the people eternal life in paradise, so why singularity is so bad? 
just because it offers eternity here on our Earth or in virtual reality? People are generally afraid of death. If they wouldn't dwell, then they wouldn't be Christians, for one thing. Why should immortality be a bad thing? Population increase rate is declining, and with even longer lifespans and singularity, we might not even have kids or... Well, we will probably have them, but they could just be like computer programs that exist in a virtual reality or inside a computer and only manifest in real world, world in some special cases. So there's no additional stress on our planet environmentally too. But mostly what I hear from people is just this general scare that they are just so scared of this idea and all the things that it encompasses. They are scared of Skynet becoming self-aware, they are scared of losing humanity by incorporating metal, silicon or graphene parts in their bodies and etc. People are always scared of changes, that's natural. But if we follow this logic then well, we already have lost a lot of our humanity and I don't just think about the last 20 or so years I mean we used to live in caves and eat raw meat and beat each other on the head with the wooden clubs we like our technology, we've always liked it, it's how we survived using technology is our main survival mechanism and we won't become cyborgs just like that one day it will still be a gradual change that has already started with, for example, Google search engine or Wikipedia. Normal pre-Google human would just go to a library or ask other humans if something wasn't clear or some facts on this or another historical person or a movie needed to be checked. Now we just do it on the internet and nobody complains. Nobody will also complain about augmented vision or hearing, then nobody will complain about Wikipedia that gives you an answer in your brain almost immediately. Also, nobody will complain about memory devices that will allow us to play back events uh, as they were seen 10 or 20 more years ago, exactly as they happened and so on. Technologies are evolving and we humans will evolve too. Also, becoming part human, part machine is the only way to escape Skynet, becoming self-aware and murderous, as robots will not want to kill their, their cousins cyborgs. Some humans will probably want to remain unaltered and I believe their wishes will be fulfilled like the wishes of famished people and others like them. But I can't imagine what fun would it be to live in a world where you'd know your servants are so much more efficient and smarter than you are and yet you are the one who's pampered and uh, live just wasting away your time. Though. As I said, people are lazy and even now some people find their thrills in that kind of lifestyle, so we'll probably see, but I'm sure we are going to be alright.